Okay, so we spent the last videos figuring out the regression line, you know, the slope, the y-intercept. We also looked at the correlation coefficient and the coefficient of determination. But there is still more to talk about with the linear regression t-test because the Linreg t-test on the calculator gave you cool information for hypothesis testing. So it is going to be very, very, very important that you go and download the combo chart for the t-chart and the t-chart that I have provided on my Moodle page because in today's video here we are going to take a look at all of the hypothesis test related stuff and also show you your first example of fully performing a t-test, a p-test, and also an r-test, <laughs> all for the same problem. So buckle in, here we go. So the first thing we need to do is get our traditional data back into the calculator. So now this is something that you've done earlier on in the video series that I've done. So if you click stat enter, okay? So if you click stat enter and use the uh, table, in the middle of your worksheet, you can type in the X into list one, which is the number of cars in tens of thousands. And then the revenue or the Y values into list two, which is the money that we'll make by buying those tens of thousands of cars in billions of dollars. So type that in. I have done so on my calculator. You can pause the video and take time to do that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to then perform the linear regression t-test. And in videos before, we have talked about this, but I'm going to show you it to you again. It's that. Move over to the test window here, and we have a drop down with all the test options for hypothesis testing and more. Click up to get to the linear regression t-test. We're going to keep everything in list one, list two. There's our independent and dependent variable. Keep the frequency at one. We're always going to do two tail for my examples here. And then go to calculate. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us all of this information. And it bears repeating that we talk about what this stuff means at the top of the calculator. Now we did so in previous videos, but in case you forgot, it's time to review it again. I mean, I don't expect you to learn everything the first time you hear it, so repetition is always a good thing. Now, we are not going to concern ourselves with beta, okay? Beta is not part of the problem, but this is something we are going to concern ourselves with. This is the Greek letter rho, R-H-O. It looks like a letter P, and when I draw it, I kind of draw a backwards uh, 9 when I do it. And think of rho as the Greek letter R, because this is going to be our alternative hypothesis. Now, it is important to know that for these uh, regression, um, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis will always have a cool pattern. The null hypothesis is when rho is equal to zero. This is basically saying no correlation. The null hypothesis says, nope, x and y are not related. There's no correlation. But the alternative hypothesis is says, no, rho is not zero, so there is a correlation. And it's a strong correlation. Uh, uh, so basically, the no correlation or weak correlation is contrasted by the alternative hypothesis for where there is a, a correlation that happens to be strong. And we're going to spend this video determining what is the critical region of values that would consider something to be strong. Now the T value is also known as the test value. Okay, that's our test value. And we would look at that on a T curve or a series of T curves, C-U-R-V-E-S, let me spell correctly. Okay, T curves. And for our intents and purposes, we're gonna make normal curve, we're gonna make our normal curve but you know from before a t-curve is like a normal curve but kind of adjusted for the sample size um, so these uh, think of think of this in terms of standard deviations from zero now that's how we're gonna talk about this and the t the test value tells you how many standard deviations away from zero on a t-curve this is now the p is also known as the p-value and the p-value 
is what we compare to alpha. And one of the common questions that I got back in the hypothesis testing unit is sometimes the story problem didn't actually tell you what alpha is, and nor will these. We will always assume that alpha in these cases is going to be equal to 5%. So we're going to have 95% um, certainty uh, that we have um, the problem you know, correct, or that we're not making a type 1 error. And so there's our alpha assumption of 5%. Now the degrees of freedom is going to be n minus 2. For this entire course, the degrees of freedom has been n minus 1, but what we have now is we have two variables, x and y, so now our degrees of freedom is n minus 2. Since you're using the linear regression t-test, this will always compute n minus 2 correctly. So in the table below it, you see that there are six different companies that rent cars. So six different companies, 6 minus 2, the degrees of freedom is going to be 4. So as a general rule, degrees of freedom is n minus 1, except with scatter plots. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that lovely data that I got from this linear regression t-test. I'm going to write down the t-value, I'm going to write the p-value, and I'm going to write down the degrees of freedom. And then I'm going to scroll down using the down arrow key here and also write down my r-value. Now when I show you the full example on the next page, um, you will see all the different information that I'm using off of this screen here. So let us get into it and write our null and alternative hypothesis. Our null hypothesis is rho is equal to zero, and our alternative hypothesis, you can also use h sub one, is rho is not equal to zero. Bam, there you go, null and alternative, the same for every single problem that I will be asking. Please look to see if your XYZ homework or online homework does anything different here. Uh, but I believe it's going to be not equal to for most or all of the problems that I'm going to assign you. Now the t-value is 10.39, which means that this was 10.39 uh, standard deviations away from the norm based on a t-curve of 4 degrees of freedom. So, whoa, this feels like a rare event, especially when the p-value on the calculator was 4.84e-4. So let's take a look at the calculator again. I'm going to scroll back up to that p-value. Do not leave your p-value in exponential notation. I will not give you full credit for that, nor will XYZ homework. So what you have to do is you have to convert that into a decimal. A negative exponential, um, I'm sorry, yeah, a negative um, scientific notation problem says to move the decimal four spaces to the left with a negative four there. See this negative four, boop tells you to move this one, two, three, four spaces to the left, which means that you will have three zeros, because if you move those three spaces, you'll have to have three placeholders. Then the 4.84 can get rounded to five, so this would be a, an acceptable way to round. In fact, most books state that if you're gonna round exponential notation, you just need the first number after the series of zeros. So there's your p-value, and wow, that is a rare event, and that is definitely lower than your alpha. And now we're going to go to degrees of freedom. Our degrees of freedom is going to be 4, um, which again, the calculator did uh, for us so nicely. And the r is 0.98. Now, what we're going to find out on the second page, which we will turn to in a moment, is we are going to find out, is 98% strong enough, even with the small sample size here, strong enough to declare that that we should reject the null hypothesis and um, I think your gut is telling you yeah yeah that just seems logical so get your R chart and combo T chart because we're going to be using that on the next page and I'm going to show you all of the different kinds of things that we're going to do with T tests R tests and even a P test Okay, so we here have the same data uh, as we did on the previous page, but what I'm gonna do on the left-hand side and then the right-hand side is I'm gonna show you the differences between doing a t-test and then doing an r-test, and at the very bottom of the page, we'll get to do a, a p-test. So what I wanna show you too is also as I zoom out here for a moment and show you the full page here, 
you can see that what I've done is I've created a, um, uh, you know, kind of like the left side is one kind of test, the right side is another kind of test. So it might be a good idea just to put a line that goes down this page here. And, I, and this way you can compare and contrast t-test versus r-test. Okay, so let's get back to a view that you can actually see very easily as I write in my notes. Okay, so the step one. The step one of the t-test. Now this is going to focus on the t-value that the calculator gave us. Now, step one is to write our null and alternative hypothesis. Okay, so what's cool about the null and alternative is that it's the same. Null says no correlation, alternative says strong correlation. Doesn't say whether it's positive or negative, just says strong correlation. Okay, step two. Now this is where your table comes into play. Look up four degrees of freedom on your t-chart, okay? And also the alpha being 0.05 on the t-chart. And also be sure you're in the two tail row on the t-chart, okay? So on the T chart, okay? So let's look that up and I'm gonna to switch to that. And this is a copy of your T distribution chart. Um, let's get some highlighters out here to highlight where we're looking. We first of all need to look at four degrees of freedom. Okay, so here we are at my yellow four there. We're also going to look at the two tail row at 5%. And so this means this is going to be my important number. This 2.776 is going to make my shaded region on my picture. Now you've done a great job so far with hypothesis testing. If you made it this far, hypothesis testing was a solid test in your mind. So what this value does this 2.776 is this is going to create where we're going to shade. Now, an important note, this has to be plus and minus. And the reason why it has to be plus and minus is because it's two tail. This is also called the CV. Now, the CV is an abbreviation for critical value. So the critical value sets up the shaded regions inside of your t-curve. Now, step three was given to us. That was t equals 10.39. And this is going to be where we're going to plant our flag. Now, let's keep going because we're now on to step four where we get to draw our t-curve. Okay, so here's our t-curve. Just try to make it look like a normal curve. I understand it is a t-curve based on degrees of freedom, but here are some markers we need to make. We need to make zero, because this is zero is the standard deviations away from the norm. And our critical value is we have a f basically our 2.776 here and negative 2.776 and this is where I said you would plant your flag and in this situation the flag represents the critical region so the shaded part portion of these curves are called the CR or critical whoops let me spell it right critical region and this if if you if your flag from step three if that little flag in step three um, lands inside of the shaded zone then you um, are going to have to reject the null hypothesis and this totally is inside that zone because it's at 10.39 it, it blew past the threshold of where it needed to land in and landed way over here to the right. Now, I will accept if you want to put in, um, you know, flags here and here if you'd like to for this test, that's fine. Honestly, I usually only put the flag on the side of which my test value is, just like we did back in our hypothesis testing unit. But 
really comparing where that red flag landed is going to be where step five comes into play. And since you guys did a great job in the hypothesis testing unit, we're going to shorten your work here. Basically, you're just going to look at this and go, wow, since 2.776 is less than 10.39, you could have also switched this around and said 10.39 is greater than 2.776. Reject null hypothesis. So we're shortening up the work that you have to do here because space is going to be a little tight. So there you go. You are now rejecting the null hypothesis because this definitely crossed into the critical region very much so almost by a factor of three you know so or a little bit more than three to be honest um so yeah yep yeah, this is definitely a correlation here so let's take a look and do the r test now now the r test is going to start off with the null and alternative hypothesis now as i do the r test versus the t test you look for similarities okay so in the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis, you're going to have rho is equal to zero and rho is not equal to zero. Oh, these two steps are exactly the same. Yeah, we're going to have the same null and alternative hypothesis. So, you know, highlight this in green, highlight this in green, exactly the same. Now we're going to move on to step two, which means we're going to use, instead of using the T chart, we're going to use the Pearson R chart. So what we're going to do is we're going to look up four degrees of freedom, okay? And we're going to look up alpha of 0.05. And we're also going to make sure we're doing the two tail uh, row there on the R chart. All right, do you see any similarities here? Well, I sure do. I see that, you know, for step two here, we looked up the degrees of freedom, the alpha, two tail, but on the T chart, and look, it's the same over here, except that we're on a different chart. Now, this chart is a little easier to learn. Now, I've got my T and R chart here. On the second page, here's my Pearson's correlation critical value table. And so, again, I'm going to get out my highlighter here. I'm going to look up four degrees of freedom. Whoops, come on, fill it in. And then I've got a two-tailed 5% alpha. So this puts my critical value at 81% or 0.811. Okay, so let's go and take a look at what I'm going to do with that in step three and four. Well, step three is getting that R value from the uh, calculator, which was 0.98, which is why I had to get it before. But now let's take that 0.81 and show you when I'm going to use it. Now, the critical value that you found on that chart was 0.811, plus or minus, okay? So I want to highlight here again with my yellow highlighter that you have to put the plus minus for both of these values. Don't forget the plus minus. Will I mark you down for that? Yup, you bet I will, even if you have it done on the picture correctly. So here's a negative one to one. This is your continuum of R values. Negative one is strong negative, one is strong positive, and all of the strong and weak values in between. But with the critical value being plus or minus 0.811, this puts us here at 0.811. Here's your shaded region there. There's your critical region based on the critical value. And then we have a negative 0.811. Yes, you do have to put it on both sides because at the start of the problem, we never declared if we wanted to have a positive or negative correlation. We just wanted to, the alternative to be there is a strong correlation. Now, where's your flag? Okay, so this red flag would be planted at our 0.98. Okay, so let's figure out where 0.98 is. Oh man, it's just like right over here. There's your flag, and I had a student actually put a little flag on top of their um, flags, just like a, you know you would on a golf course, or and I just thought it was cool, so I'm going with it, man. So this is 0.98, and yeah, we are definitely in the critical region, and when we're in the critical region, we reject the null hypothesis. So in step five, we're going to shorten this up a little bit, since... 0.811 is greater than 0.98. You could have also said 0.98 is greater than 0.811. And please only focus on the side where the red flag is. We're going to reject the null hypothesis. Now, 
<laughs> your um, conclusion on the left side of this problem should match your conclusion on the right side of the problem. These should match. If you have one that comes out to reject and the other that comes out to do not reject, please go back and check your work. And maybe contact me to see if there's a problem or a discrepancy or maybe a rounding error. But now I want to add the last part, this important info, because you know what we found? We found a p-value. Yeah, we found the p-value. Remember, p was equal to point triple oh five. Okay, well, we can compare that to our alpha, which was point oh five. So is p smaller than alpha? p is definitely smaller than alpha. So here we go. Since p is less than alpha, reject the null hypothesis, which is the what we did over and over and over again in the previous unit and my goodness all three of these should match if you don't get <laughs> if you get a discrepancy between all of these you've made a mistake and commonly people would who don't convert to uh, decimal here might have that 4.8 and go like well 4.8 is bigger than 0.05 so well again you made a mistake if all three of these do not match. So that's the important info. The important info is to double, triple, quadruple check all of your results because if there's a discrepancy where you reject in one and do not reject in the other, well, you got a problem. Now, what's great about the next four pages of notes you're going to take is that these are four full examples. Yeah, we're just going to do homework-like examples in the next uh, two videos here. The video after this one is going to cover positive correlation, whether being it strong or weak. And the video after this one is going to deal with uh, negative correlation, uh, be it strong or weak. Well, thank you, everybody. You've just did some powerful stuff. We just did the t-test, r-test, and p-test using the linear regression t-test for regression in statistics. Thanks for watching.